All right. Same. Okay. Are we on? We are on. All right. Yeah. Professional motherfucking setup. It all up in here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of the Lorecraft Incorporated podcast. I am still seeing the title card. There we go. I hadn't changed it yet. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> I figured you were going to so intro in and then we'd oh, change it this. Okay. Look, look, we are a high quality, <laughs> high professionalism fucking setup here. If we do it the same way right every time, that lowers our professionalism. You see, it's a reverse. Yeah. Look, look, I fucked up. Okay, shut up. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody, once again to uh, episode two of the Lorecraft Incorporated uh, podcast. I am Grid City Mike. I am joined again by the Erston. COO, Erston. See, jumping ahead of stuff. See, he's already, <laughs> I, I let him out. I let him out of the basement once and already he's he's getting ahead of himself and stuff like that. God, I, my room lighting looks like a sex dungeon. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not saying that it doesn't. I did add some color correction just to, which might have added a little oh, bit of. There we, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Now so, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, that Adding was that, a little sex dungeon y, huh? Yeah, it was kind of like, it was like, bump, bump, bump. Not necessarily a bad thing. But not that is the, that is the meta. Nonsense. Look, that's, that's, that's for the, the Twitch ERP meta. broadcast. That's for the ERP broadcast later. But yes, Twitch meta. Uh, yeah, I guess the next thing that we have to do is we have to get a hot tub. Two hot tubs. Two hot tubs. Yeah, and, and be doing this um, hot tub ASMR lore talk. Anyways, we've gotten off on another tangent, and we're not going to do that again. Anyways, uh, in this particular uh, edition of the Lorecraft Incorporated podcast. We're gonna be we're gonna be talking about some things because that's what we do. Because we're two dudes with no attitudes who talk about fucking nerdy shit like fucking character motivations and and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go over a little bit of the news in Final Fantasy fourteen over the past couple of weeks since we last did the broadcast, including. The uh, controversy over uh, the cruise chaser uh, mount, uh, which admittedly, until I learned stuff I was a part of, um, <laughs> I was right there with everybody else being all pissed off about it. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about the seasonal event, which, you know, like after uh, ARC and Ninja Warrior, like you can only go down. Um, but, you know, they're doing what they can, with what they've got. Um, and any other uh, upcoming uh, events that we want to talk about. And then our big discussion, uh, something that we touched on last time, is talking about uh, the redemptive elements of Final Fantasy XIV and if whether or not there is too much redemption, too little redemption, uh, but it seems that that is a, that is a major that is a major element of the story. So that's something that we're going to talk about here. Um, and we left up some, uh, some additional space for us that in case we go off on uh, stupid tangents, like we just did a moment ago with my sex dungeon lighting um, that, uh, that we can do that. So, uh, so we're going to get started. Um, yeah. So we ended up, doing our inaugural podcast for this 
Final Fantasy fourteen focused uh, endeavor uh, uh, content during the same weekend that there was an actual in-game con convention. Lunar Con. Lunar Con. <laughs> and not only <laughs> what did this happen, it happened on our data center on our goddamn server. We had absolutely no reason to not be there and we weren't because we're marks. And, and, and I knew about it. He even knew about it and he didn't tell me. And that is why afterwards I did have to beat him with a wet pool snake. I figured you uh, knew. How, <laughs> dude, I don't pay attention to shit. <laughs> LunarCon, like, I mean, I suppose if I actually, like, paid attention to people, you know, um, I would probably know more about stuff like that, but, yeah, so we missed that, which was dumb of us. Um, it would have been really cool if we had had a whole thing to be able to talk about our experiences with LunarCon and maybe even have met some of the big Final Fantasy 14 content creators, you know, the people that we want to join the illustrious ranks of. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, at least we can say that we weren't there. Um, we were the hip kids that were too cool for it. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were, we were, we were way too cool. We were way too cool. We were way too cool to meet, to have the potential to meet fucking Mr. Happy. The guy, a guy I've literally been following as a content creator since he like started Final Fantasy 14, like since he started that stuff. Like, and who else was there? It was Happy was there, Sly, Sly was there. <laughs> Excuse me, um, Chris uh, Shenpai, and so yeah, this, who was you know part one of the hosts of the event. Yeah, so it was, yeah, we're... God. There's a lot. If it, Anonymous. If it, yeah, Anonymous was there. It was something that we want to, that we definitely want to get get in touch of and... and touch the brain touch, of. Touch the brain. Touch that brain. Um. So, yeah, man, I I feel like, I feel like a fucking loser. <laughs> it would be one thing if it was just on the data center, because then we could be like, oh, okay, it was on, you know, it was on like Marlboro or fucking, you know, or God Balmung or something like it was that. On I bet Primal, you I know even. I bet you I know or if it was on a different data center, like if it was on Primal, it's like, okay, well I'm not gonna make a whole new character, you know, when you can't make characters right now. They had they made characters on our data center, on our uh server in order to do this thing. And so yeah. Um so we just have to make sure that we do not miss the next one. Um but that does lead me to that does lead me to actually an interesting interesting point of the topic. What do you think about in-game player driven events similar to LunarCon? Like we we get the odd stuff every once in a while especially unfortunately we only seem to get cool stuff when people die. Like, you know, when the Berserk creator died, they did that whole thing uh, mm -hmm. of everyone lining up in Ulda in their Dark Knight glams. Uh, when that one very uh, respected player died of COVID, you know, people got together and they did, a, they did a march around. We only seem to really do cool shit when people die. So uh, LunarCon being, you know, not that... Um, do you think that's a do you think that's a that's a thing that'll that'll persist? Do you think we're gonna get LunarCon two or whatever for like the next expansion? I, I definitely think so. It from <laughs> seeing it like in other videos and such, uh, catching up on what we missed. Uh, it, it, it was definitely really popular. A lot of people popped in. Uh, Discord was hopping, and it it looked like a really fantastic event. That it was a shame that we did miss. Uh, all, and I definitely all... think it's going to happen again and hopefully maybe, you know, encourage others to host their 
in-game events as well. So 2023 Lorecraft Con confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> to 100%. Even if we're the only two motherfuckers there, 100% Lorecraft Con. Confirmed. It's it's going to be the Baka Con of in-game Final Fantasy cons because we are not at all dedicated to running a high class, <laughs> high quality event. It's going to be like, I want bad cosplayers. I want like, I want, I want it to be campy as possible. I want the worst people there. Like not <laughs> like the worst people there, but I want the worst people there just doing messed up stuff uh, because I am a degenerate and I 100% want to display the degeneracy of my fellow degenerates uh, <laughs> because we deserve we deserve to have our voices heard uh, not everyone in Final Fantasy is uh, you know a clean cut weeb uh, some of us are fucking filthy and are horrible and go to like fucking dive bars where we're pretty sure that the guy who's serving the drinks killed a man. Uh, you know, there's we're 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 a diver diverse group is what I'm trying to say, and 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 we degens will have our voices heard. Um, I, I I feel like you just actually identified the standard. Is that, is that well, and not I mean, the exception? I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know if that's a standard. I don't know or, if that's a standard uh, for most uh, for most servers uh, or others. Maybe for, Bryn, maybe for Bryn Hilder, others' perception kind of, of what the standard would be. I guess. Yeah, is which maybe also the wording, which also like was a funny thing because we were talking and you mentioned it when you when you told me about LunarCon. We were talking about how. <laughs> how we consider our server to be the ass end of nowhere and here we are literally at the same time that I'm saying that the biggest fucking content creators are throwing a goddamn party on our fucking server yep. oh my god <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe that's why it's just easy uh, real estate yeah I, I mean well I mean the biggest server of course is Balmung yep. you know but no, you're not getting in on Balmung. Like you're not making a character on Balmung. And on top of that, <laughs> we're degenerates. But there are degenerates on Balmung. <laughs> I mean, it's the Moon Guard of FF14, who would absolutely ruin our reputation as low as that, as low a bar that is. Uh. So, and don't get me wrong, okay? I want everyone to understand. One, I live in Tacoma, Washington, which is, again, excuse me, which is a den of, you know, a hive of scum and villainy, the likes of which only exists in few places on this planet. <laughs> um, it is it is gritty it is filthy and it is filled with the people who are literally the salt of the earth and so i love that level of filth and the fact that that brynhildr has that level of filth in the game that i play i appreciate balmung is like <laughs> seattle when and i and we true tacomans hate Seattle so much because they're just like us, but they hide it. And the worst of them come out at night. Um, but that is a tangent that I'll go on on something else later. Maybe you'll maybe you'll find out take out. Oh, uh yeah, by the way, we're branching out. We're gonna talk about it more on the outro, but we are branching out on the socials. We are branching out on everywhere that you can find uh your podcasts and stuff like that. Um you know, we are, we are, we are going worldwide, boys. Do it Go worldwide. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, talking about, yeah, how, uh, how embarrassing that is. Um, 
So, um, let's let's talk about let's talk about the let's talk about Cruise Chaser. Okay, I will freely admit. God, it's thirty bucks. I will yep. freely admit that when I first heard that they were selling Cruise Chaser. I thought it I thought it was fucked up because I thought that you got Cruise Chaser from doing uh E eleven, because that's the one where you fight or not E eleven, but uh A eleven. Yeah. Um and that's the one where you fight him, right? Because it's not because he's just before twelve. Yeah. Um so I thought that when you cleared that on Savage that you got Cruise Chaser's amount. Um so when I saw that they were selling it, I'm like, well that's fucked up. Like you can you can go in the game. You can get that for free. Why are they now? Now they're selling an achievement, but that I was corrected. So yeah. I can understand the knee jerk reaction that some people were having, um, over the sale of a uh, fucking cruise chaser. Um, but then, you know, when I was educated, that, that is not the case. I can literally tell you at that very moment, my dick went soft <laughs> because your rage boner, my rage boner was quieted. It, 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 it retreated inside, inside of its shell. Um, but I, I understand that there are, that there are people who are legitimately mad about this and like okay so since you haven't since you have it up what other cash mounts are there uh, other than we all know about the bike we all know about the fender um true, true. but like what other cash mounts are there uh all right well let's take a look mounts for all characters of course got the lunar whale from the fan fest whale the fucking chocobo thing <clears throat> mm -hmm. another whale mount uh, the peacock mount the and fucking spriggan. fat cat the spring well cat. The Spriggan, wait, wasn't the Spriggan a seasonal? Or didn't you get this? Oh, no, those are the eggs. I think it was just the eggs and the hat. I think that you got oh, yeah, his outfit and, and stuff. Hat. So you got the Spriggan. What else is there? Is uh, that it? Fenrir, the whale, the carpets. Oh, yeah, carpets. The, I, I'm not sure what red hair is. It's very Lubu ish from. Like, yeah, that's that that that's exactly what red hair is. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm pretty sure that was the name of his horse, actually, red hair. Yeah, yeah. Among among men Lu Bu among horses red hair. Um the Nezha thing. Nezha fucking yeah. panda. Uh Chocobos galore. Or sorry, carbuncles galore, I mean. Oh yeah, the carbuncles. So they already so even before Cruise Chaser, they had all of these cash mounts. And we did not hear nearly as much bullshit about it until the WoW people came. I don't even think no. it's that. Because the big the big thing that people were upset about was that it was because it was an in-game boss and it wasn't like an achievement mount or anything like that. Like for clearing T, it was... It was something that people have wanted, like like Viera. It's something that people have wanted for a long time. And they're like, okay, we'll give it to you for $30. And that's why people are mad. Because, uh, you know, instead, A12 gave us the Aradeus mount, which was kind of cool. It's it's one of the ads from the A12 fight, but it's uh, it's no but... cruise chaser, what people wanted. Okay, you know what? Okay, now I'm... <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, now, no, now I'm getting it because I remember that back when A12 was the thing and people came out of A12 with the fucking angel dildo and not cruise chaser, people were pissed off. Mm -hmm. I remember that now. I remember that now. Okay. The, so that puts a little bit that puts a little bit more context mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, th that's why people are mad about it. And the, I guess the Shadowbringers equivalent would be if they put the Titan in the ATV as a cash shot. God, mount. Oh people my God. would be so flipping mad because you got the skipper instead. Yeah, because you got the fucking the fucking uh, the the, sea, the sand skipper. The sand which, skipper, which is which is kind of lame. And didn't and didn't if you did E one Savage, you got Eden. Mm, uh, E12S gives you the Eden mount. The Eden? Okay. Okay. 
So yeah, so okay. Yeah, riding around on that. I mean, even if it's not like like even if it wasn't like you riding on Titan, riding on the ATV, if you were able to ride, if it was you on the Titan ATV, oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. And that would be awesome. It would be. Well, I mean, and you could get you can get uh Ramo, you can ride Ramo. Mhm. Yeah, uh, you could ride Ramo. Eden Ramo. Um yeah, okay. So okay, that actually that actually kind of like in in like real time that kind of like puts puts a little bit more perspective on it because it's like cuz before I'm just like okay, you know, like whatever. But yeah, cuz it's something that people have really wanted to and they've been asking for for literally two expansion cycles. Yeah. Uh, uh to get fucking cruise chaser. And I understand it was data mined a long time ago. And people are expecting that, yeah, it was either going to be through achievements or like top 100 in PvP because cr- variant cruise chaser is in rival wings, I believe. Mm. Uh, so people figured it was going to come from there and nope, cash shop. Okay. Well, I mean, still at the same time, like it changes my opinion, but it doesn't change my opinion a whole lot because it's like. Yeah, I get it. And if it was something that you were really looking for and something that you really wanted, then it totally makes sense that you would be like kind of ticked off um, about now it's going to cost you 30 bucks. Um, But at the same time, uh, it's not like they did it the other way. It's not like they did it to where it was a like, like I'm not, I'm not giving them a pass on it, but at the same time, like the the attitude shouldn't be they could have done worse but at the same time they could have done worse <laughs> you know they they could have done uh they could have done a blizzard they could have done I, I I like that one video I mean I don't even pay attention I I've never really paid that much attention to wow until now um but uh, the one video that the one guy did, where like it's a it's a it's a parody video and it just drops and it's Bobby Kotick, uh, Bobby Kotick's yacht. <laughs> <laughs> that's your and that's your six month uh, your six month subscription mount is uh, is Bobby Kotick's yacht. Um, oh yeah, six months uh, get a cruise yeah. chaser. Oof. That definitely oh. could have been worse. Yeah, like or or like. Like they also and like they also have like the pre-order mounts. Like they had the you know the cool Death Knight uh, uh, weirdo mount uh, yeah. for Shadowbringers. Uh, starts with a G. Got, um, yeah. Crap. I, I don't know. It now. looks it looks weird. It looks weird. So I'm not like a huge fan of it. Uh, I want to. It's like not Gatry Gary. So should have given it a name. Uh, Grani, that's its name. Yeah, Grani or, or whatever. And then now you have the freaking oh, uh, uh, Sletnir. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, because it actually has six goddamn hooves. Um, Can't do four-legged horses in this game. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you've got that coming for Endwalker. And then I remember... Yeah. What was it? It was like a uh, fucking Lapidos, <laughs> Lap- or uh, whatever the oh the yeah, Soldra monster, yeah, for fucking uh, for fucking uh, storm for uh, storm blood. blood, and then see that was another thing though, they didn't have a pre-order mount for Heaven's Word, but you ended up getting Midgard Stormer, like you ended they... up getting the 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 travel dragon because he's with the fucking backpacks. I could have sworn um, I got a griffin mount for... Oh, yeah, the griffin. Yeah, the griffin. No, no, yep, yep. They gave the griffin. Because I had I got that griffin, and then I got the true griffin later. So, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I can I can understand people's legitimate frustration. Yeah. Um, But it's... they could have done worse. <laughs> Yeah, and it's nice that even, you know, that it is account-wide, thankfully. It's not like the, um, I think, isn't Fenrir, like, not account-wide? I know no, Fenrir's account-wide. I got Fenrir is, when when someone gifted me Fenrir. I've got it on every character. Okay, yeah, these are all account-wide. 
Yeah, that's true. And, Most and of I these mean, farm mounts are account wide, and that's the other thing is that you spend thirty bucks and it's account wide. Like, so, okay, yeah, the cheaper ones are the ones that are single character only. Well, I mean, those ones are the leftover uh, models uh, and stuff. Uh, no, the Our previous uh, leftover, holidays uh, and stuff too. Because because the chair, the heart yeah. chair, and the egg and the Christmas bear. Yeah, the the cloud and the white devil and red baron I think are the exceptions, and they're just recolors of like Nero yeah, so, and Livia. Uh, Nero and uh, and Livia, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I can I can follow the how certain people would be upset, and they're not wholly unjustified in being so. But it's like seriously, folks, this is this is the hill you want to die on, like. <laughs> like you yeah like and 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 everyone and everyone knows that you're raising a big stink about this and you're and you're you're either gonna pay for that mount or you're still logging into the game tomorrow <laughs> uh or you're still logging in when shadow when uh endwalker comes around so you know maybe pump the brakes a little bit uh take a breath go touch some grass you know um and you know find find what sparks joy what 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 brings your center what makes you happy um and uh you know just kind of let it go um i do think it's important that we that we pay attention to stuff like this because uh final fantasy and especially final fantasy 14 has done 10 years of regaining trust work. That's uh, true. And there that doesn't mean that they don't have the possibility, they don't have the capacity to slip back down the slippery slope. Um, you know, so keeping an eye on it is one thing, but you know, I mean, you know, let's let's be real about it. Um so yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, overall, what do you think? What do you think about Chris Chaser? I like. I was never against it being in store. Uh, so I, I, I do see why people would be bad. That's not in game, especially because they've uh, been upset about it for a long, you know, wanting it for such a long time. But it doesn't bother me, and maybe that's the privilege of me having the disposable income to go. Oh, hey, new store mount. Okay. Bloop. So it yeah, doesn't fucking, affect me fucking much. Log in, fucking log in yesterday to do fucking fake grinding. And there he is with his fucking cruise chaser sitting in front of my fucking face. You fucking mark. <laughs> it's Erston. But I mean, yeah. I, and I think maybe that's that's probably why I, I also, you know, am biased um, in that regard. And so to me, it was like, okay, this is not anything new that you, they put you know, st grabby store mounts. People like the Sprig and like the, the Peacock. I know once, once I saw the Lunar Whale, I'm a FF4 was my first real Final Fantasy and, and always my favorite. So I instantly jumped on that. Um, I think it's just how much you want it. And yeah, it's, it is kind of expensive for sure. But and it, but it's accessible to everyone at least. It's not locked behind top 100 PvP where you have to play something that a majority of players don't enjoy, or something like T, which is kind of also similar of similar case, where not everybody will enjoy it or can achieve it. And maybe that, I, I, yeah, and maybe that's the thing is like. Should it have been like a, a gloat mount, you know, the kind of thing that only the elite of the elite can get? And I think maybe that's why people are upset, because they wanted this gloat mount. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, but like, maybe that would have made more sense if they released it back when Alexander was a thing. Like... Yeah, it's been like it's it's literally been two expansions, bro. Like, that, that's you know, it, it it sucks that you didn't get your cruise chaser while you were progging Alexander, you know, 
but you know alexander's been progged dog you know so even t at this point's kind of been progged yeah i mean and i mean people are people are clearing t on a regular like i mean fuck jez has been has been doing it weekly (laughs) for shits and giggles yeah yeah just you know so his alts his alts alts his yeah, seven different then, characters. Yeah, he's got to do it on on his seven different characters across four fucking uh, across data the, centers. Yes, across the the nine realms with the <laughs> elven lords. And all you know, all Jezzes must have T <laughs> weapons. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, like I said, that gives me a little bit more context. Uh, under you know, remembering the the fervor for Cruise Chaser back when it was a thing, but it's mm-hmm. like. Eh. Uh, you know, that's cool. But, you know, you know what is the best and most important mount of them all is the polar bear. Because polar bear is life. Polar bear is love. Brings us to. He showers his love upon you with his Shiva ice cube in the sky. Brings it to you with his with his gentle bear face uh and so we are of course talking about the current seasonal event which is the moonfire fair which so i have a little story about the moonfire fair the moonfire fair is the first seasonal event that i attended after starting final fantasy 14 I had just come back to Washington after moving from Alaska. And it was during that time when I was 100% in kayfabe on Asia. In fact, oh man, let me see if I can... You'll have to pull it up on your screen when I find it, Urson, but I'm pretty sure I still have a goddamn screenshot. That... We managed that. Um... Uh, Moonfire Fair. That's where I met Fang. Fang Demon. Yeah, from Trent. Okay. Yeah, I met Fang at that uh Moonfire Fair. Um, back when, like I said, I was one hundred percent in kayfabe uh, as Asia. And for people who are listening, who are wondering what I mean when I say in kayfabe, I was I don't essentially. Know I was essentially low key catfishing. Now, look, I never asked nobody for nothing. I didn't pretend that I was a girl in order to get stuff from people. However, if people decided that they wanted to give me stuff because they thought I was a girl, I did not say no. Does it make it right? No. Doesn't mean that I have some explaining to do for people that might catch up to me about it. <laughs> yes. But that is the situation as it was at the time. And so when I say I was 100% in kayfabe, and for the ex- explanation for those who don't know wrestling talk of what kayfabe is, kayfabe is essentially the narrative. When you are playing the character on screen, and the things that are happening on screen, that is kayfabe. When you break kayfabe, that's when you break character. That's when you break the narratives, when you break the fourth wall, essentially. So when I oh. when I mention I'm uh, I'm in kayfabe, uh, when I was in kayfabe on Asia, that's what I mean. I was playing Asia. Um, I was I was acting as though I was a girl IRL. It's a complicated thing, um, and people are free to ask me questions about it and I will explain it to the best of my ability it is not something that I so much do anymore because I've changed and matured as a person since then Um, but it was nothing that was ever malicious however back to my story Um, pictures let me see if I can finish pulling this shit up Um, screenshots nope Ah, so it's for ice cream okay that explains a little bit better why there's a polar bear at a summer event. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I forgot you hadn't done it yet. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't um, done it yet. Fantasy. Actually, for me, I for Gaz and I, 
when we first started playing Final Fantasy XIV, I am pretty sure the Moonfire Fair was probably our first seasonal event because uh, we started playing right around June, so that would line up with the usual Moonfire Fair type of stuff. Must be in another folder. I'll find it. Characters. Me quotes. I started getting really oh. anal with my screenshots and sorting them by year. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually so I have them stored by character. So every time I changed, you know, I did a Fantasia or whatnot. Yeah, I'm stored by character, then by race that they were at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, that was that was also during Moonfire Fair, but that was earlier. So you got like a little Gosh. bit of elote. Tabletop. Uh, yeah. Costa del Yellow, which is ice cream. Basically Spanish for ice cream. Yeah, frozen water. Let's see. Moonfire mask. Oh, here it is. That's okay, I found it. Found it, I found it, I found it. Okay. So. Very Majora's mask vibes from that. The mask stall. So into here. And I will drop it into the Discord chat. And then All right. All right, everyone. Are you ready for this? Yeah, are you ready to see me in my fucking 2014? Uh yeah, 2014, dog. Pull that shit up. That is me and Fang, and I do not remember who that chick is. I don't know even which one was you. I assume the one on the right. Uh, the black haired one, of course, because why am I ever going to have white hair? Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's Jez. I'm no, that is not Jez. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, unless Jez, unless Jez was kayfabing at the time, too. I don't know. Maybe. He's kayfabing um, all the time. <laughs> yeah, Jez lives in kayfabe. Jez lives in Jez. Lives um, in Jez. Okay, so everyone that's lives in Jez. But yeah, that's 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 young Fang right there. Uh, so yeah, so Moonfire Fair is a Moonfire Fair is a pretty important event to me, because um, you know that's that's where I made my first friends outside of my free company at the time, uh, my free company which was made up of uh, everyone that I knew in Alaska. Um, so, God, I was pale. Ah. I have other pictures. I have other pictures of, of that Asia. And that was back when I was Asia clan clan. Um, you say clan clan? Like, yeah, like from fucking Outlaw Star, I was fucking Asia clan clan of the Kataro Kataro. Oh, okay. Not, because I was a sexy fist fighting cat girl. I thought you meant like, you know, taking people to the clam jam or something. Taking people to the clam jam? <laughs> 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 like, that's your ERP identity. I mean, I mean, I wasn't, I was a bit of a whore, but still <laughs> like clam jam. Seriously. <laughs> I got it from gauze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I have other pictures of, uh, <sighs> of that Asia back when I God, so pale. So very, very pale. Um <laughs> Fang, okay, is, that shit off. Fang is darker than you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so Moonfire Fairs Moonfire Fair is important to me. Uh and I've enjoyed almost every Moonfire Fair. Um and especially when they got up to doing uh uh Aorcian Ninja Warrior and we got to do all the fucking jump puzzles. That was that a shit fun was one. cool. It's a uh, it's a shame they took it out. You were telling me that they did not have it this year either. Yeah, this year they don't have a uh, Aorzine and Dwarf. They don't even have the setup, <clears throat> which I figured like they could at least just put the you know put the thing on, so that way people can can run Aorzine Ninja Warrior even if they're not actually doing it as part of the event. I think that's that, something because they just they, you just did phase they do that it the into second the year. Yeah. Well, no, the second year it was still part of the it was still part of the event. Okay. But I mean, they could just phase, you know, just like they phase everything else in. Uh they could just phase in the fucking jump puzzles. 
But I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll come back to it. Maybe they'll bring it back when we get into Endwalker and and stuff like that. But um <clears throat> so uh pretty uh like I said, pretty important to me uh is Moonfire Fair. Moonfire Fair and the Rising, which I believe is immediately following uh, yeah, this year is. as well. Um Moonfire Fair or the Rising is also where I first started getting into like really getting into lore on uh on Final Fantasy because the Rising and I'm 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 only going to touch on this real quick. The Rising originally when they first put it out was in canon in game 5 years removed from the calamity. And That's true. they said that every rising after that was another year on. So I originally started counting my time in Final Fantasy based on the rising. Because it's like, okay, this rising is the five years after. And then the next one was six and so on and so forth. I've had to change that since then because they're not. They've, they've kind of, oh. Yeah, they're not. Cam. They're not doing it, you know, as part of, or, you know, they're not considering it inside the bubble anymore. But, uh, but yeah, so anyways, event was fun. Uh, did it. Uh, it was all right. It was all right. <laughs> as I, uh, it was all right. I mean, then I think maybe with the exception of usually the, the Christmas one, they're not and even the Halloween one. They're not usually too in depth. I mean, the Halloween one, go, they usually go more hardcore for. They used to go all in on the Halloween one. Like, especially that one where they had the haunted, haunted house, house. Where, you could, where you could glam into other characters and other NPCs and shit. That yeah, was, that was cool. really fun. Um, and like, I totally get, I totally understand why in the current setup that the holiday events have gone kind of low key. Um, yeah, actually, but think that of a topic used to be next time. Yeah. Uh, uh, talking about uh, talking about our uh, our experiences and our love because like that used to be a major selling point for me like when I was telling people about Final Fantasy I used to be like yeah man the fucking seasonal events are lit and they're like what do you mean like you know no one does like anything serious for the seasonal events and I'm like dude they go all in for their shit they like make like instances and like make like little dungeons and shit and then like the little games that they used to put out during Rising you know, like that fucking dungeon one that was in the rising yeah. just before Stormblood, <laughs> where it was like the text dungeon. Like, are you serious? For new people that are watching or that uh, are listening, go into your go into your in room and go to your toy box. Inside that toy box are most of the little mini games that they made, and most of those came out during Rising, and. I believe the little dungeon one is in there. So, yeah. Your um, cam keeps exploding on me. Oh. Uh, Let me. I have to like refresh the uh, browser connection. There we go. It will probably help. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to get a regular camera, of course. But you know, we we only operate in the highest quality and the highest production value here uh so i have to make sure that the camera is made of like tin cans and some tin and some uh aluminum foil uh make with your like, viewfinder with like the 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 coke bottle lenses from an old lady's glasses um just to make sure i get the right aesthetic um but so yeah um we could talk more about the seasonal event, especially after you do it, um, yeah. and uh, and get into that. Um, Rising is coming up after that, and then what's after that? Fucking uh, Final Fantasy it, Fifteen. Yeah, I believe it's the Fifteen crossover in September. Uh, I liked actually. I actually liked that event more in Final Fantasy Fifteen. Fighting, fighting Garuda. Fighting Garuda in Fifteen. Yeah, fighting Garuda. Fighting Fourteen's Garuda in Fifteen. 
Yeah, I mean, was fighting 14 is Gerudo and 15. And the fifth, I wish that like the 15 Gerudo was an actual thing. Yeah. In 14. That should be an actual fight. Uh, they should make that an unreal. That would be cool. That would be nice. Though, uh, usually events like this, they, they try to gear it for level, I think usually level 30. Isn't that where most seasonal events lie? Yeah, but I mean, making making it an unreal. That uh, would be a great fight to have an unreal. Let's you, lets you run it on 80, which would be mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, especially if they go full EX and, you know, put Chirata and Suparna in there. Um, so... So yeah, uh, events are a thing. Events are fun, and we love them. Um, so uh, let's let, let let's move on to to the big to the big thing that we want to talk about. Yes. Uh, being being Lorecraft and talking about the Lorecraft and talking about the storytelling. One of the things that I remember hearing first from both uh, Bellular and from Asmongold and I've heard repeated in different ways and means uh, from other people that have recently started and tried the game is the discussion on Final Fantasy storytelling and its its main throughput of telling stories of redemption Um, and how that affects the community because it automatically fosters a sense of forgiveness and a sense of understanding or desire to understand I should say I think is a I think is a better is a better way of saying that um, a desire to understand and uh, that that filters into the community but something else that's kind of a part of that is I remember a long time ago, uh, I believe it's when just before and spoilers for anyone that ain't there yet just before uh, they killed Moonbrita there was a thread on the forum uh, that I remember the title of and it was this story needs some teeth and what the original <laughs> poster was talking about was that Apparently, apparently, and this is this is kind of news to me. Apparently, in order for you to be able to tell a good story, people have to die, and they have to stay dead. Now, I mean, I've told a lot of stories, and I've done and I've done a lot of uh, a lot of uh, creative narration uh, over the course of my life, and I've told some pretty good stories nobody's died in um and i've also told some pretty good stories that a lot of people have died in so i don't know am i like in this particular instance talking in in talking about this old ass post that i saw a long time ago that actually kind of pissed me off when i read it am i am i missing something do people have to die in order for you to be able to tell a good story i think i feel like that depends if it's an instance where you are making it seem like they are going to that they are dying i I can get where people would feel to cop out when oh hey we didn't actually show them getting stabbed and and going and then they show up later i can kind of get that especially if it's used too often um but i don't think that death necessarily has to dictate a good narrative or not companion to that in speaking of Final Fantasy's uh, tradition of redemption do we have too much redemption inside the story of Final Fantasy because you made I mean, you made a very impressive list yeah uh, uh, the free paladin from the paladin quest Astinian now is Thornton alive or didn't he get didn't he get deleted Oh wait, the camera. Yeah, okay. my camera just died. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean Thornton technically dies. Yep. Yeah, so we so, put Thornton away. Yeah. Uh, um, Isale. 
Is Sale, Race Vulgar. Race Vulgar. He, uh, he's Fordola. more of like the enabler. He wasn't necessarily an enemy, but he did come around from being complacent and enabling yeah. Nidcog to do his stuff too. Vibe yeah. The piece. Yeah. Fordola. Well, I mean, well, I mean, and the thing about Race Vulgar is, I mean, people can people can think about it in different ways, but Horace Vilger was in his situation was presented with an impossible choice. Yeah. He could sit there and let Nidhogg be blind and die because he wouldn't have his fucking eyes. So he would just dissipate because that's where all of his power is. Um, so he can let Nidhogg die. He could let his brood brother die and also suffer the injustice that the oh, oh by the way spoilers motherfuckers um uh suffer the injustice that you know sword the first and the original knights of the round put on the dragons i mean they fucking murdered a sister and ate her eyeballs so yeah, that way they could be her. more powerful yeah you know they fucking they they murked it wasn't a it wasn't a it was a murk <laughs> they murked Ratatosker. They, yeah, so they straight that up way, maliciously yeah. vie for her power. And yeah. and so, you know, they murked Ratatosker and Nidhogg came for blood and they essentially murked Murdered Nidhogg. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so they, you know, they had already eaten Ratatosker's eyes, they had both of his, so he goes, hey, bro, like, this is some fucked up shit, are you just gonna sit here? And, you know, Racevelger was kind of like, ah, fuck, like, he's my brother, like, what am I, yeah. you know, can't, what, what can't am I gonna say do? No. Can't, I can't really say no, you know, so, but at the same time, they did fuck, you know, did, they did do fucked up shit to him, and to my yeah. sister. You know, they, 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 they killed essentially two of my family members you know and but you know thanks to me voring shiva which I'm, that's that's another thing yeah because they don't shape shift in this game yeah they don't <laughs> uh but you know thanks to me voring shiva uh you know for whatever reason that makes me calmer i guess uh, I'm Grace Vilger, and I just ate my girlfriend, and so that chilled me out. Like, okay, um, that's something that's always kind of been like a, kind of been like a what, <laughs> um, and and so he's like, you know, all right, well, I'm not gonna go do it myself. So here's one of my eyeballs. Here you go. Uh, I, I'm just keeping you alive. What you do with it is is not. I'm not liable for kind of a thing. And then and then fucking and then fucking Nidhog makes the most long term. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm gonna take myself back. And I know that we're not even like halfway through this, but I'm gonna take myself back for one moment to the moment that I realize that you know when everything gets put together in that moment when it's like when Nidhog says this isn't a war. This is an eternal slaughter for the vengeance of my sister. Until I decide, and that this Nidhogg, until I decide otherwise, I'm killing you, I'm killing your children, I'm killing your children's children, and then I'm gonna get your children's children's children to kill you as well. Because if they sup upon the blood of dragons, they become dragons themselves. And I'm, I'm, oh. <laughs> that is that is some ninth circle of hell diabolic shit. <laughs> it is. That is the kind of thinking that only someone who lives forever comes up with. Not, I'm going to eradicate all of you for the justice of my sister. Not, I'm going to kill all of you motherfuckers. You know, or I'm going to kill you and your children's children. No. He perpetuated a grand slaughter for a fucking century. That was a thousand years. Let's say a millennia. Of of, or yeah, for, for a millennia, that was a thousand years of blood 
and he wasn't done. <laughs> that's that's what Naruto was getting. That's <laughs> a thousand years of pain. That's a thousand. That's a thousand years. And he sat up in the airy and just fucking was in it. He was yeah. in those feelings. So you got to give you got to give respect <laughs> to Nidhogg because he that that is some super villain dedication to to fucking vengeance. <laughs> and I can only hope. That should anyone ever cross me that badly, that I will be able to exact a similar retribution. You know, <laughs> it's not you, it's not your kids, it's not your kids' as kids. It's all of you motherfuckers until I decide and I can live forever. <laughs> because you killed one, one. <laughs> of my brood folk. I am going to torture you for a thousand years after a thousand years. Uh, anyways, okay, so Praise Vogar for Dola. Did did he end get redemption? Eh, his is not, not so much. His is more of a I don't want to get involved and in, I don't want to be the leader of Doma. I just want to live free and then he kind of comes around. It's not really redemption, I, always, I guess. Yeah, I always felt that his was more like he was more concerned with the with the peace and stability of his people and yeah. he knew that if he stepped up people would die that that well i mean that not only would people well, die that they would, would follow him yeah they would follow They're, him and it and, would ruin any semblance of peace that they had even yeah. under the even under the boot of yatsu yeah uh so yeah, I think that's more of a that's more of a realizing that you, you know, that you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, fucking Yotsu, you. Mm. Let's talk about yeah. her. Hers is another um, one. Um, yeah, Gaius, um, the unsundered Asians. Because they, yeah, I mean, and that one's kind of a eh, because it's it's they're the, they've been the villains for a while. And then you kind of—they kind of get the redemption that they're—they're they're not just evil, evil. They're—they're they're trying to restore their loved ones and their world. And even, There's the thing, and, though, Emmett, and maybe Emmett is more more than the others. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though, and I think it's something—it's something that could ask that could even be put into a greater discussion on primals and stuff later. Mm. How much of that dedication is temporary? That's very true. I mean, they summoned Zodiac and Zodiac's Zodiac's primal. Yeah. How much of Emmett Selk's dedication to his people is temporary? Because in being dedicated to his people, he is being in service to Zodiac. How much of Elidibus's uh, hero complex of Elidibus's need to be the savior of his people, which caused him to be the heart of Zodiac. How much of that is tempering? Because tempering is like I uh, like it's it's more flashy in Final Fantasy, but tempering is like indoctrination. Yeah, in it's domination Mass, Mass Effect. Effect. Yeah. yeah, you know it's it's. You it's the don't subtle even mind know. control. Yeah, you don't even know that your thoughts are not yours. As far as you're concerned, you've your perspective is just shifted to exactly what the per, what the people in control want you to believe, and it's the most you know it's the most insidious kind of slavery. So that's something definitely that we could put on put a pin in, and and have a deeper talk about. Um, you know, of how much of the of the Asians desires is tempering, which I would have to say, especially of the unsundered ones, probably about a hundred percent. Uh maybe sundered Asians like Fandaniel are you know a different breed, you know, because Fandaniel obviously is not if a zero Zodiac guy. It. Yeah, he gives no shits about fucking Zodiac. 
Unless uh, that's what he thinks. Unless that's what he's let he's he thinks he thinks he thinks. Um, but you know, that's when we start getting into the fucking inceptions of the, yeah, yeah, plots upon the, plots upon plots. The fucking Ouroboros of mm -hmm. uh of uh primal tempering and and uh uh indoctrination. Um uh let's see. I I don't think I don't think the Allegans even threw uh Une and Doga and the Exarch. I don't think that I don't think they get actual redemption. The because the only redemption that you can get th with the Allegans is from Zonde, and we murk his ass. <laughs> We, we 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 send him back to the cloud of darkness, um, and and on top of that, the Allegans get no redemption for what they did to Bahamut, <laughs> for for what they did to the dragons. They get zero play there for was. that because they they did those motherfuckers dirty. <laughs> yeah, they did. The Mericidians. Yeah, they did the Mericidians. I mean, everybody, like, everybody, not just the dragons. Anything that, anybody they came in contact with, really. Yeah, but I mean, like, just talking about, like, Mericidia, like, the, the was it the four the four tribes on Mericidia? Because you have the dragons, and then you have the three that made the warring triad. The warring triad, yeah. You know? So, and they did all of those motherfuckers dirty, and you have to like like with Nidhogg, you have to respect the Alicans game. They did not fuck around. When they said this fight is over, they meant it. And and then they enslaved your people and they put them in batteries to charge a god to run their fucking blender. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they did. <laughs> like they they enslaved your people and turned them into batteries for their fucking microwave. <laughs> what kind of fucking a pimp named Slickback shit is that? <laughs> oh my gosh. You got, man, the Allegans. <clears throat> like, you can, like, you can go through a lot of the fucking Final Fantasy villains, like, and, like, Final Fantasy, like, evil empires, and... I mean, you can look at, you know, the fucking Final Fantasy VI, uh, Gestal, uh, Empire. You can look at the, Gar you can even look at the Garleans in fucking 14. And nobody rocks the we run this shit like the Allegans did. Oh, nobody. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> they turned your, they turned you into batteries. <laughs> Well, they turned your gods into batteries. Well, I mean, they turned you yeah, into a battery to power your god so that way your well, yeah. god could power their weapon. Their, yeah, their stuff. <laughs> like, that's... You want to talk about Matrix? You want to talk about the Matrix? <laughs> that's basically... That's, that's the fucking Matrix right there. They turn everybody into copper tops. But... Yeah, so I don't think the Allegans even even with the sacrifice of Une and Doga and like the best that the Allegans get is that the Exarch takes what they have left and uses it to the benefit that it should have been used. You know, and uh, yeah. So, and then yeah, the beast tribes because we are we consider them to be like mindless fucking savages, and and now they're okay. Now they're no longer tempered, and yeah, we can get along with them. Yeah, it we was can just get a mis along with them. it wasn't their fault. It was their the primals. Although, although you have to give props, especially to the uh, to the kobolds, um, because <laughs> they have they legit are grievances. Still well, and they're still not letting fucking Limsa Lamenta get away with their bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they are still, they're still like, look, we made promises with you guys, and you legit you broke, broke it. them. Like, and so, and you're coming at us with this shit, and 
any I love I love Blofuswin. I love the Admiral. But every single time she gets dressed down by somebody, especially like Yashtola or someone like that, where they're like, Y'all fucked up. The kobolds were totally willing to be left alone and to just do their thing. And y'all decided that you wanted to pull some fucking, you know, pirate shit, pirate shit, and got slapped for it, you know, because as soon I as the kobolds out, yeah. were like, yeah, as soon as the kobolds were like, were like, okay, well, y'all fucked up, so we're going to summon our god. The Sahagin were like, oh, well, we made treaties with these people too. And so we know they're going to betray us. So oh, let's call it's Leviathan. Leviathan. <laughs> yep. They they yeah, yeah, so, they dug their own grave at that one. Yeah, so I got at, but don't get me wrong, I'm Maelstrom till I die. Uh um, Save. Because as much as I love Raubon, because Raubon is best boy, and any of you fucking Exarch fanboys out there can come fight me on it. Um as much as I love Raubon, I hate Old Da so much. <laughs> I I hate Old Da so much. I I, I wish, hate it. I wish that Old Da and the and the blades were the maelstrom because I when I first started playing I was into that a blood and gold shit I'm like yeah blood and gold and sand and whooping people's asses and making money yeah fuck yeah and then like it all got messed up with you know especially the crystal braves everything leading um, up to the parting glass yeah everything leading up to the parting glass just kind of ruined all of that and I was like I'm Maelstrom now because yeah they're also shady but they're more openly shady <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like they make a deal with you they don't stab you in the back they shoot you in the face um, so I'm more down with pirate shit than I am fucking old Oz bullshit um so, do you think that the Scions and the Circle of Knowing and Louis Swa stuff, especially considering where we're going now, do you think that that absolves or redeems the uh, the Charlians for their lack of fucking participation in reality? It's hard to say because you're ju at this point. Because you're kind of judging this, this, you know, a small piece of a whole. Do, do the actions of a few redeem the whole? Because it, you know, through Louis Swa, you know, in the circle of knowing, you get the scions who are, you know, you know, this positive force, which perhaps, per, you know, casts a redeeming light on the Charlins in that, you know, they were once affiliated, but at the same time they've kind of become their own thing so it's hard to say I feel mm. sorry um I don't think that the scions especially considering I mean and we don't exactly know of course where things are going to go in Ed Walker mm. um but just looking looking at Yashtola dressing down the form when mm -hmm. she goes fine stay behind your motherfucking walls we are going to fight the end of the world you know until the heavens fall and until our last breath I don't think the scions count <laughs> as charlians I don't think they've counted as charlians for a while it, pretty it, much that's... since they left yeah, I think that's also that's very safe to say is that definitely at that point for sure it's established like if, that like if anything you count the char you count the scions as just plain Aorzean. they're not from uh uh what's it 
you know, they're not from Ulda, they're not from, they're not necessarily from any of the city states, but Charlian, Charlia is not all, you know, they're also not doing that there. The Scions are just kind of like, we're, well, originally we were just for Eorzea. Now yeah. they're kind of for like, you know, everyone. For the world. I yeah, guess, you know, because. Of Heidelin. Yeah, because, you know, shit be fucked up. Um, and so, oh, Xenos. Look, everyone else can hate on Xenos as much as they want to. I like him. Um, He's one of those examples of we actually have someone who's absolutely not going to have a redemption arc. He does not have any remorse for what he does. He 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 loves what he does. Yeah, but OK, so now we can now we can kind of get into whether or not there's too much redemption, because because let me tell you this, if you think they can't put together and and this is and this is one of my arguments actually for Xenos. Okay, everyone, no one likes Xenos right now. Like, and not in the in the not in the way of of like you know he's a heel. We hate him. He doesn't have heel heat. Uh, and using wrestling terms again, he doesn't have heel heat. He has go away heat. Heel heat is where it's like, you know, oh, I dislike this guy. He's a bad guy and I want him to get his comeuppance. That's heel heat. Go away heat is I don't want to see this guy. Right now, Xenos has go away heat. He has go away heat right now for sure. So did Alphano. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So did Alice. Every. Yeah, Alice, I mean, she she had a little bit less of it, but when she comes up at the end of Heaven's Word, leading into going into Stormblood, she, I mean, she she's a little bit, she's a higher tier okay, than yeah. where Alphino was, but the twins both had go-away heat. Uriange had go-away heat. You know, for the most part, for the most of through Heaven's Word and, or through ARR and Heaven's Word, the scions with the with the with the exceptions of Moonbrita, who died, uh Tataru, and like Tataru, you either like Tataru because you like the cute little assistant character, or you hate Tataru because you generally hate Lalafels as is proper. Um hate Lalafels, oh. but I love Tataru because of her shrewd business sense, which I is mean, I mean a lot I mean, of that's, I mean that's fine like you can you can be wrong and that's cool La <laughs> and her Lala weaver Fels. skills La okay look she doesn't get a pass okay my racism for Lollafels because I'm not a racist on like real shit it's the one thing that I allow myself to cling to is my anti Lollafellism or yeah, anti Lalafellism. Fuck Lalafells. And I'll tell you why. Fuck Lalafells. Because Lalafells are the reason Ulda sucks. I mean, you're absolutely right. <laughs> there, are absolutely, you are. there are Lalafells. There are Lalafells in Linsa Laminsa. But they don't make it suck. Because there are no Lalafell pirates. Aren't, aren't there? Yeah, I don't think I, I can think of any. Like, there's some, like, minion types, and, but there's no leader and, types. Yeah, and the one Lollafell, uh, the, well, the two major Lollafells that you run into in, uh, Limsa, in, uh, in Limsa, Limsa, uh, and Vilbrand and stuff like that is Gezeruju, mm -hmm. who is a lech. Yeah, who instantly cowers at the sight of you of the Warrior of Light, and that guy who steals uh, the fucking sword um, for uh, in the samurai quests, and you kill that guy, <laughs> or uh, what's his face uh, kills that guy. 
Uh, so yeah, Lalafell suck. But anyways, um, what about the waitress? Zenos? Uh, I forgot her name. She's the waitress that's that serves the sirens at their restaurant. She's mostly involved in the cooking quests. Oh well, she has a crush on I, the cook there. Considering that I didn't the, do culinary quests. Oh okay, okay. But regardless, regardless, you could present to me the evidence of a Lalafell like giving money to puppies and like rescuing babies out of trees and shit like that. They all fucking suck. They um they can't reach high enough to rescue babies out of trees. Exactly, and that's the problem. So you're saying it's an issue of effort. It's 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 an issue. It's an issue of Lalafell. Look, it's not supposed to make sense. I can't logic it because it's racism. If you, you logic sure? racism, if you logic racism, it falls apart. So look, look, Lalafells are horrible, and 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 that is my that is my hill to die on. I'm dying on that hill. Yeah. And anybody, and if any of you Lalafells want to come for me, if you're an inch taller, I'll be able to crush you with my boot. Like, I that's, like f- for me, it's I take the Emmett Selk approach, like. I don't cry when I eat a vegetable. I don't consider it murder. So why would I consider it murder if I'm, you know, stomping on a potato? Are you are you eating lalafels? Is that what we're talking about here? Is that where we're going with this? I I, I maybe maybe I eat a popato. Maybe it's a lalafel. I can't tell the difference. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, off of off of way of lalafel talk. But no, that's fine. We gave ourselves time talk about bullshit so xenos xenos has go away heat right now but so did other people so if you think that they do not have the capacity whether or not people accept it is is another matter but if you Hmm. think that they don't have the capacity to change someone from having go away heat to either face or heal heat you are incorrect because they've done it before I don't even think it's. Zeno? I don't. I don't think it's Go so ahead. much that. I think it's that the way they've built him up is that he has no interest in changing his ways. It seems. It, yeah, I think it's more of an acceptance thing where they've built him up to be someone who would not care if there was a, you know, a brighter path. He doesn't care about it enough to take it. Except. He, Xenos had no choice in his creation and he had no choice in the powers and abilities that were given to him. He's like Kefka. Huh? Except that Kefka made the active choice to remain crazy. This does not mean that they don't have the ability or they don't have the resources to be able to put sympathy into Xenos. I don't think they're going to. I, I think that they're right going now. to keep Xenos, you know, evil, like actually evil. But I think that they're gonna they're gonna take they're gonna they're gonna like take the razor a little bit and they're gonna cut the edges off of them a little bit because what they'll do is go, yeah, he's fucking evil. So was Kefka. Like As much as people get upset when people make Sephiroth references to Xenos, he's more Kefka than Sephiroth. And they'll be like, yeah, he's evil, so is Kefka. But Kefka, as is Xenos, is a product of his environment. You know, being hypercharged, being resonant, you know, having the echo essentially forced onto him, broke him, and he's kind of he's kind of nutty. I, I think yeah. the I, I think the biggest mistake that they made with Xenos, and this is generally, oh shit, it, dropping stuff. I, I I I almost I dropped my tea, but the lid was on it. Um, the. The the main mistake that they made with Xenos is also the mistake that they made generally with Stormblood. 
Stormblood should have been two games. Yes. The first part of Stormblood should have been three or 4.0. And then 4.1 through 4.5 should have been the other half. If they had done that, they would have been able to better tell the story of Xenos and build him more as a competent and capable threat. Hmm. Oh, because see. because the main the main thing about Xenos is that he's essentially the evil version of a shojo of a sh of a shonen anime protagonist. He pulls shit out of his ass. He's got way more power than is proper. Uh, and he has no explanation for it because they don't actually tell the take the time to tell Xenos a story. They just go, oh, here's this guy. He's got he's essentially the evil warrior of light because he can do everything that you can do. But better. Just as and, well, if not better. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows how to do the shit that the Asians do. He knows how to slip the bonds of the soul. He knows how to transfer his shit into other bodies. He fucking out Asians the Asians. The Asians. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But you don't get you don't get any of the storytelling for that. But imagine if they had taken just all of 4.0 and just made it all about Alamik. Then after you beat Xenos, 4.1 through 4.5 is the other half of Stormblood. Letting them tell the story of Yotsuyu over a longer period of time instead of sh shoving half of her story in the middle of Stormblood and then telling the rest of it in the patches. They could have even made Yotsuyu, who was already a decent enough character and had a decent enough story told about her. They could have made Yotsuyu even better. Um, yeah. I think the I think the pressure at the time to deliver F FF14 Weeb edition kind of got to him. You know, following Heaven's Word, everyone was like, you know, when they introduced the domains in a realm reborn they're like we want we want, you know, doma. Uh, we want doma we want asia you know we want you know we want the asian section hey, of the world. yeah you know we want we want china we want asia we want all that but they were already pointing Planning everything for alamigo alamigo and so when it actually got to them getting the planning stations they're sitting there like man if we don't give these weebs what they want, they're going to be really fucking pissed. <laughs> so, so you think it's kind of a little bit more of the Viera situation where they were planning the hot Hrothgar, they were going to do Hrothgar, and then, okay, these people won't stop talking about the Viera. Yeah, they won't fucking let's leave just, us alone about the Viera. Let's just give them and, Viera. And so if we don't put Viera in, it's right, going to it's, it's gonna hurt the bottom line because... Yeah. because and. I am a very, I try to be a very understanding and accepting person, but I want, I want the people who are watching and listening to understand something. <sighs> if you tie your identity to whether or not a video game has a race that is representative of what you imagine yourself to be in the game, you need to go touch some grass. The vitriol and the rancor over A, the lack of male Viera originally, and B, the lack of female Hrothgar. The fact that they gender locked these two races at first was and is ridiculous. There were people who literally were like, I don't feel represented 
in a fantasy game that has fake races in it. <laughs> because they couldn't play a bunny boy. What the actual fuck? <laughs> that's... That's crazy. Like, and that's... There was definitely a lot of toxicity around it. It's, it's just, it's one of those, no one's ever happy. They, people were complaining about the bunnies. They finally put them in. We're not happy with it. <clears throat> and it's like, they had wow. to, they had to, they had to 180 what they're working on to get them in for you. And now you're not yeah. happy. And then, and then, and then on top of that, it's like, how dare you, the, you know, you know, being the, you know, the the developer you know me entitled person who doesn't feel represented motherfucker i'm black <laughs> do you know do you know how many games out there represent me not a lot i don't say I, shit <laughs> i could probably count on my fingers how many dark-skinned characters are even in ff14 like like that's literally why i made that's why uh, Maki, she's dark skinned. She's dark skinned. That's why Shara, dark skinned. You know, like Ustiana, not so much, but Ustiana was supposed to be German. Yeah. <laughs> of course, she had to she's be uber white. Hails the sun. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, but I have, I'm glad that I have the option of making dark skinned characters. I appreciate that. But at the same time, this. Number one, this is a game that's made by fucking Japanese people who are lucky if they see dark-skinned Japanese people. And on top of that, they're fucking fake. <laughs> the fake races. There are no actual cat girls out there. So if you think, if you think that the lack, like originally, because remember, cat girls fucking me quote were gender locked. They didn't have male me quote in 1.0. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Me quote because just like in uh, eleven, uh, yeah, you had the you had the you had the the Galka and the uh, Mithra. Mithra. Mm -hmm. They were both gender locked, so they essentially just moved that thing, that thing over uh, 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 design philosophy into fourteen, where the me quote were all cat girls and the Rogadin were all buff boys. People lost their shit over that. I'm not represented in a game that has fake people in it. So, anyways, I'm I'm, I'm gonna get off that soapbox. That might be something that I might have to save for my personal channel for people to fucking flame me on later. Because I'm sure that I'm sure that I'm gonna get ripped apart by people. And you know what? Yeah, on my personal channel, fucking come, come for it. I will I will defend my position vigorously. Um, it's weird because you have that, you know, that sort of I'm not represented, and then but then you have something like say you jump into Devil May Cry and you have zero choice whatsoever, or you have like wow where you have literally three faces per race, and all those races are fake too, or sword art where everybody's human. And that's it. Where, wherever or sword art, where everybody's Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, and mm, it's a thing. It's a it, it's a thing for me. So that might be something that, like I said, I'll I'll have to touch on in a in in a different thing later. Um, but back to the back to the 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 core of our of our discussion at this time of the re of the redemption uh or ex excessive redemption thereof uh in in final fantasy do we need more unapologetic evil hmm well oh and actually you just made me think of another redemption story potentially oh. lalafels <laughs> redeeming Lollafels. It'll never happen. <laughs> It'll never right. happen. And I'll tell and I'll give you I'll give you one I'll give you one name mm -hmm. that ensures that it'll never happen. Lola Rita. See, that's exactly the that's actually the example I was gonna bring up. And it was that Lola Rita 
switch the poison so that uh, so that uh, Nanamo didn't die. You know why he did it? It's for his own personal gain. Egg fucking exactly. <laughs> if it was if if Nanamo dying helped Lola Rito and she's a fucking Lalafell too. He if mm, no no Lola Lola Rito doesn't get a fucking pass. Okay, <laughs> like like I will I will give Nanamo a pass, but only because. She is so is so integral to Raubon. Raubon will do anything for that little potato, and it's it. He he is the ult Sigma level simp uh, for for Nanamo. But if Lala if 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 Nanamo dying was more in Lola Rito's interest. He would have put a worse poison. <laughs> he wouldn't have just let Delegi out of Legi's poison sit in there. He would have put in something that would have made her fucking face melt off or something like that to make Telegi out of Legi look even worse. So that way he would still get exactly what he wanted. Telegi out of Legi would still be dead. Nanamo would have been dead. And he would have still had all their money. Because yep. who got all of Telegi out of Legi's, out of Legi's money? Lola Rito. Rito. If Lola Rito had the ability to get all of Nanamo's money, guess who would have all of Nanamo's money? Lola Rito. <laughs> so, so no, no. Just because he did the more... Luke, he went the more lucrative path. He made he made a clear understanding. He said, "Now, nah, right now, it's not in my benefit to have her dead. Uh, to have her dead now, nah. but if it was in his benefit, if it can be in his benefit, and if it is in his benefit, he'll kill he the bitch like anybody else. Oh yeah, he'll he'll put her in the fucking ground. And no, no, there's no there's no redemption on that." We'll we'll be lucky if Robon chops his head off like he did to Leggy out of Leggies. <laughs> Lola Rito, like you gotta respect the game. Don't get me wrong. I I respect I respect the I respect game. that he's good at it. Yeah. You know, I respect that he's good at it and he knows what he's doing and he knows exactly how to get what he wants. This man, okay, Lola Rito, double, almost triple infiltrated his own government <laughs> in order to exercise his plan. He bought out the Crystal Braves. Yep. He bought out the and, Brass and, Blades. And, and, and remember, and, or well, yeah, and the Brass Blades. He bought out the, the Crystal Braves. He bought out the Brass Blades. He uh to Leggy out of Leggy, like I'm I don't know if it was the handmaiden that served the drink, but remember, to Leggy out of Leggy found someone left over from the Thorn Dynasty who was a goddamn handmaiden in the in the fucking palace. Yeah. If that handmaiden is the one that served the drink, Lola Rito bought out the Crystal Braves, he bought out the Brass Blades, and he bought out the person who literally had the most to gain from Nanamo biting the dust. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he that he paid her off too. He bought her out. So, Lola Rito's game is on point. He's the fucking LeBron. He's the fucking Jordan of fucking Game of Thrones level bullshit and fucking Ulda. So, I respect, I respect the player, but nah, he don't get a pass. He don't get a pass just because, just because just his because plan, he plays the game well. Yeah, his just because his plan happened to not kill somebody. <laughs> when if it was within his benefit to fucking kill him, he still would have. He would have let Nanamo. He would have buried Nanamo in a shallow grave, and he would have let Raubon rot in prison, if if it if it achieved his shit. So, no, nah, he don't get it. He don't get it. <laughs> um, so, back to the question. Do we need more absolutely irredeemable. irredeemable evil? People who are bad on top of bad 
and they don't give fuck about being bad. Do we need, you know, Xenos 2.0? Because I'm pretty sure that we're going to put the axe to Xenos come Endwalker. Yeah, uh, I, I assume Fan Daniel probably halfway through. I mean, I'm going to say he's like the 87 trial or something. Considering, I don't know, because I mean, and, and this is this is just a little bit of speculation. My speculation goes one of two ways. One, if they really have an under if they really have an understanding of how much the the player base dislikes Xenos, they have Fen Daniel kill Xenos. Ooh. Yeah. If they're really that, if they're really that eyes on for how much people don't like Xenos, Xenos is a fucking red herring. And so Fan Daniel, Fan Daniel's using Xenos for his own ends, ultimately, no matter what. If it makes more sense to have Fan Daniel put the axe on Xenos, and then Fan Daniel uh, is uh, level ninety. Is 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 the level ninety trial, um, Fan Daniel slash uh, Zodiac? Um, because look, uh, no matter people can believe what they want to, we're going to see Zodiac. We're we're, yeah. we're, we're going to see Zodiac. <laughs> yes, we're going to see Zodiac. We're probably going to fight Zodiac. Uh, so now here's here's what I think is more likely to happen: Xenos and Fan Daniel and Zodiac is is level 90 is going to be the last trial and and like all three of them together like like uh la Habrea and iggy Yorm, and then the mega uh the, the, the prime Asian, the prime, prime or whatever or, no, sorry yeah. zodiac prime or whatever yeah so i think that's more likely we'll probably fight fan daniel halfway through like 85 86 because what 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 was uh what was titania what was Titania? She was Six, 80, she's a uh, 73. She's 73. So 83, 84. We we fight Fan Daniel. Um as a as a trial because he can he can fucking go full Asian and 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 make it trial worthy. Um or maybe something like like Lunar Ifrit. Uh or fuck. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, that just did they? I forgot. Did they say Anima was going to be a trial or a raid boss? Or I think Anima was going to be a trial. So that might be that might be uh, that might be eighty three. But mm. I want. Oh man! I literally just thought of this, and I'm about to put this out into the world. And there's the possibility that this could be like real shit. So, what if? Fan Daniel and the Telferoy, Fan Daniel and Xenos and the Telferoy. What if they gather up a whole bunch of fucking goblins? What do we get with that? It's a good question because Illuminati we was get, more of a subset and got had Alexander. We get Lunar Alexander. Okay. That's fair. We would get Lunar Alexander. Like, I mean, they, they, they could easily capture a whole bunch of Illuminati, stuff say, them in a tower. But, I mean, even then, if they do some brain work on regular goblins and have them believe that fucking Alexander is their god, stuff them in a tower and have them sum summon fucking Lunar Alexander. Now, admittedly, the lunar versions of the primals are less powerful because we fucked up Lunar Bahamut. But Lunar Bahamut couldn't control time. <laughs> lunar Alexander would be able to control time. It's possible. I don't think it's an avenue they're going to go. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I... I I, I hope not, but it's like, but the nugget is there. Like mm -hmm. if fan, and especially if it's, if fan Daniel knows about shit like Alexander, like why the fuck wouldn't he like, why, like you're going to give me the opportunity to be able to create 
even on a lower power level, like fucking like if Lunar Alexander is the same power level as Tycoon. That was 20? still enough. It, yeah, you know, in, in, in the 20. If Lunar Alexander is the same power level as Tycoon, Tycoon was enough to break the wall between dimensions and travel through time. He needed the, they needed the crystal tower to make it work, but he was the engine. Yeah. So I that's but that just that's just something that came into my head. But anyways, anyways. Hmm. Uh maybe that's like I think I think we'll have to dedicate an entire an entire episode or maybe even a series of episodes to just talking about primal bullshit. There's a lot to talk about with primal bullshit. Because primals Primals are the most heavily yet still vaguely defined thing. Yeah, I was gonna the say game. they're they're very much the eye of Autothon. Yeah. Um, like we know everything about primals, but we don't know anything about primals. Yeah. It's so, it is the ex machina of this of the series. Yeah. It's the you, we and if we need a plot device, primals. Yeah, if we need a plot device, primals. You know, we got we we need to we need something we need some kind of dangerous adversary or uncontrollable power primal. Um, do we want to present the warrior of light with a with a true challenge, primal? Uh, was Hades primal? It's arguable because. It, he is the culmination of the wishes of his brethren and their prayers. So he could have been the could have been a primal version, like similar to how Shiva and La Lady Iceheart sort of, uh, you know, yeah, okay. Lady Iceheart was the vessel. In this case, well, and, and it might and, have been accepting as the vessel. And oh, hey, uh, welcome. Uh, Amber, and thank you for hanging out and uh, contributing to the chat. Um, the well, and and um, Elidibus, when Elidibus becomes Warrior of Light at zero point X, um, at uh, Seed of Sacrifice, he essentially, 5 .3. He, yeah, he he summons himself into. Uh, the he, warrior of light. He some yeah. I mean, he he does the Shiva thing. He summons his what he believes the warrior of light to be into himself, yeah. using using the other warriors as his. Well, fuel. using like like he essentially does the same thing as Thornton does. Yeah, he pulls up Thornton because Thornton. You know, use you know Thornton the Seventh. Use thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Final Fantasy fourteen. The world where thoughts and prayers works. But he he used just the. I mean, it's not even necessarily the prayers. Do you think anyone was really praying to uh, Thornton the First? No, but ev but everyone in Ishgard knew about him and revered him. And it's the same thing with the Warrior of Light. Like, mm -hmm. everyone knows about the Warrior of Light and revers the Warrior of Light. And all that Elidibus did was kind of condense it into, so... you know, Final Fantasy I, uh, Warrior wow. of Light. Uh, you know, he, he took the... He took the belief, you know, and... And turned it into that. Anyways, this is still we're still talking about fucking primals and shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see primals and because they're fucking inescapable. Um. So 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 let's let let let's let's wrap up this by let's let's an let's answer for ourselves the question, and I'll I'll pose the question to you first. Is is Final Fantasy XIV too redemptive in its storytelling? Does it need to have, quote-unquote, 
more teeth. I think so to an extent, yes. I think, like, especially with side quests, it needs a little bit more teeth, a little bit more grit. I think the main story itself is fine. Well, like, what side, what, what side quest? Like, give me, give me an example of a side quest where somebody needs to die. Uh, for instance, like a lot of the pirate ones, it usually ends up with them usually getting chased off or uh, getting arrested. And I think some of those could definitely have used a, oh, you're definitely dying type of feel. Okay. I, um, all right. Hmm. I mean, so, I mean, there's only really one like pirate group that I think deserves that. And that would be the bloody executioners. Well, yeah. All of the definitely other pirates kind of fall in line. Most of them do. Yeah. Uh, um, let's see. What's another good example? Hmm. And it's not even so much as a they have to die because they're irredeemable but just that you can't save everyone kind of a thing or and or not everyone wants to be redeemed or I sees think, the error th of their ways I think that's I think that's a better route to take yeah than then you know you must die for your crimes yeah it's I, I think I I can agree that Final Fantasy 14 story doesn't illustrate enough that you can't save everyone yeah the warrior of light saves everyone yes and every I time with the exception of people who willingly sacrifice themselves, like Moonbrita and Papalimo and Horshfont and Horshfont and Shiva and you know, and, uh, people who willingly jump in front of the bullet, they go away. But that's because that's their choice. Nobody bites it because the warrior of light wasn't fast enough. Yeah, everybody will like, for instance, yeah, like in those side quest examples, everybody will eventually yield or if they've beaten, they get knocked out or something. There's, there's no, you know, I, I have too much at stake. I'm going to fight you to the death. I think maybe an exception was that sable mask wearing guy, but he, not even that during the beast. The fucking AR beast, the beast, tribes. Beast, the beast yeah. tribe guy. Fucking joke! <laughs> oh my god! Oh he my was god! I, hope... I feel like he was the grittiest that it ever got for yeah. for a while. Like and and like on top of that, like I hope that in Endwalker we run into that guy and we just fucking beat him up. Like by the time because he doesn't show up in he doesn't show up in uh uh and or not in Shadowbringers because he of course can't go to the first. So yeah. of course it doesn't make sense for him to be there. We spent we spent an entire expansion as the Warrior of Light, kicking ass literally in another world. I hope that when we finish the fucking Beast Tribe quests in uh I can't remember the quest line's name or anything, but that was one where the guy was a dick, went against his friends and people, but should have at least been jailed for his mean misdeeds. Okay, Amber, you literally just described like most, most of them. them. <laughs> most of them. <laughs> That's most of the quest be a lines. A little bit more specific. So what I ever said is I can't remember the quest lines name or anything, but that was one thing that I think was a little too redemption happy. The guy was a dick, went against his friends and people, and should have at least been jailed for his misdeeds, but winds up saved. I think that definitely happens. There's definitely a few times where I'm like, this person should have gone to jail, but because like, oh, the he they they's like I'm sorry in front of the warrior of light. The, the the like say the uh, yellow jackets are like okay or the uh, or the right. wood whalers are like you know what we won't we won't go as hard on you as we could have even though the warrior of light didn't say hey go easy on him it was you said you were sorry okay like you said you were sorry in front of the warrior of light and the and the warrior of light accepted your apology so 
we're just gonna take you and we'll 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 hire you to work for someone else or do some other job. But but speaking of that, speaking of that, what happened to you, Yuhase Laurentis? We don't know. Probably working for the Lorito. Probably working for Lola Rito. On the DL. Because if there are two guys who I need to die, <laughs> I need it to be Yu Yu Hase and fucking Laurentius. Laurentius. Yeah. And especially fucking Laurentius. Yu Yu Hase, he can get he can get a pass because He's never been anything but honest. Like from the yeah. very first times that you fucking meet, uh, that you meet you, you Hase, he's up front. He's like, motherfucker, I just want my money. I'm just here. I'm here for the bag. You what? It, like um, like was it the line? From, I'm a true uh, Lalafell. Yeah, the line from uh, uh from fucking uh, Last Samurai is like, you want me to kill Japos? I'll kill Japos. You want me to kill the enemies of Japos? I'll kill the enemies of Japos. You want me to kill anybody? Cheyenne, Cheyenne, Nez Pierce suit. <clears throat> you want for 500 bucks a week, I'll kill anybody you want. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but remember, I will gladly kill you for free. That part isn't part of Yu Yu Hase's thing. But that is one of my favorite lines from that movie. But he's like, and probably know, true. <laughs> he's, he's, he's upfront about it. So, mm-hmm when he fucking turns on us during the fucking Crystal Braves thing, not at all surprised. <laughs> nope. Laurentius, on the other hand, that motherfucker was re- was repentant about his bullshit, about uh, selling out to the Garleans. And mm-hmm. we fucking trusted him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say, because you had the quest line where you, like, saved him. Yeah. And, and... I want to know if whether it. I want to know who it was that killed that killed Willred. All we know is that Willred bought the dust. I want to know who killed him, and I want that person dead. And I'm hoping, I'm <laughs> hoping that it was either Yu Yu Hase or Laurentius. <laughs> so, anyways, okay. So, it is about time for us to wrap up. I don't know how far we got on the uh, on the on the on talking about the redemption story, but we had a pretty good discussion about it, anyways. Um, uh, as before, uh, ladies and gentlemen who are listening and paying attention, um, Lorecraft isn't just the just this podcast. Uh, we have a lot of other projects in the works, uh, slowly but surely, because we are two dudes with full time job attitudes. Uh, we are we are working on some shit, um, so keep an eye out for that. You know, if you're watching us on Twitch, please hit follow. If you're watching us when it goes up on YouTube, hit like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, we are out on I believe every podcast uh, thing except for iTunes right now. Um, yeah. So if you download us uh, onto your preferred uh, podcast app of choice, uh, please hit the likes and stuff like that. So that way we can we can move farther up the uh, the social media ladder. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, follow us on TikTok. Lovecraft Inc. All one word. We're there. Um, yeah. We're working on short form content for that as well. Um, and uh we got we got we got more stuff coming uh especially doing stuff outside of final fantasy 14 uh probably by the next broadcast we're gonna have uh we're gonna have some stuff talking about uh tt rpg stuff tabletop rpg stuff uh which is another uh passion that we share um but we're gonna get into it all because yes yes there is a tiktok uh like i said it is all one word we don't have anything on there yet but we're gonna so if you if you hunt us down on TikTok, uh, go ahead and give us a follow. Um, that would be appreciated. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, do you have any uh, any parting words for for our our people there, Erston? Don't. Yeah, I was going to say that our next episode will probably have uh, some TTRPG stuff, or at least some storytelling 
uh, topics in general, not necessarily just TTRPG, but also applicable to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and who knows, maybe maybe next episode's the one where we dive a little deeper into Final Fantasy XIV RPing, as that is also a thing that yes, we that uh, partake of. That so, is also a thing that we do. Um, so, uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we hope you have a good evening. Um, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and take it easy. And remember, if it's easy, take it twice. Erston, lead us out. All right. Everyone, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all those good things on wherever social platform you see us on. Take care, everyone.